Up next, you're gonna see a free episode of my show which airs exclusively, well at least there's the one episode we do on YouTube every weekend, but most of the time it airs on Motor Trend On Demand. It's kind of just unfiltered behind the scenes stuff with some of your favorite people from Motor Trend, which you can see over there. We talk about car stuff and other things, beard stuff, clothing stuff, all kinds of stuff. You'll see on this next episode coming up, which we hope you enjoy. If you wanna see more, sign up for a free 30-day trial at motortrendondemand.com. Or don't, whatever. All right, we're just two cool guys sitting in an Evoke convertible. Hey, seems pretty slow. <laughs> what are we driving? Uh, well, in this episode of Two Cool Guys. Two Cool Guys. Should we explain that joke? Nope. Okay. Two Cool Guys in This a... is a Land Rover Range Rover Evoke convertible. Is it a Land Rover Range Rover? Yeah. We've okay. got a Land Rover badge on the front that's green. Okay. So we are in the Evoke convertible, and that means it is a roofless SUV. Yeah. Not a lot of cars in this segment, and we're going around the figure eight course. Why? I just, I haven't driven this thing ever. I wanted to see how it's, not terrible actually. I mean, I remember in 2012, we gave the Evoke hardtop uh, SUV of the year because it actually drove pretty well. This drives pretty well. Whatever happened to the Evoke? Uh, it's still around. Yeah? It sells, you know, well for a uh, tiny, small SUV. Yeah, yeah. I gotta say something. This is all right. This I might, is... I might disagree with you there. This is, drives all right. I might. You don't think it drives well? I, you know, what is? <laughs> I'm gonna go straight. I've never gone straight on this road before. Quantify drive well. It, it went around the figure eight pretty good. Uh, I mean, what's pretty good around the figure eight? That was pretty good. What What is pretty good? That. Let's, let's describe what is pretty good. Felt okay. Wasn't terribly pushing. Wasn't, uh, you know, wasn't not a lot of power being shot to the rear wheels. But, you know, uh, wasn't embarrassing itself, wasn't falling over, wasn't scrubbing the tires. What I found it, when, I, when I tested it is it was decent so long as you were tidy. Yeah, I was kind of tidy. And, and, you guys see how tidy I was? So long as you were between the lines, it was, it was not embarrassing. It was, yeah. it was fine. It's pretty good. It was totally fine. I've driven worse cars around the figure eight. Sure, Worst today you have. Figure eight. Sequoia? Oh, yeah, Sequoia. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Any Just, car you can't turn off stability control on is immediate fail. Um, and I don't mean fail as an internet lingo. I mean like F right. on the on the yeah. scorecard. Yeah. I'll say this. I did two laps of the figure eight. Yeah. And I went from 91% fuel left to 88%. So Nice. Yeah. Burn of fuel. That's right. So Pantheon of convertible SUVs. Not many. Well, Wrangler. Is that a convertible? Yeah. Yeah, it is. I mean, I, this no, is it one is. of those things where, like, the tomato's a fruit, but nope, you don't nope, put it nope. in a fruit That's salad. why everyone was like, Nissan Murano cross cab is such a dumb idea. I'm like, the Wrangler was the original SUV, and it was always a convertible. And then the next SUV was the Defender, and that was a convertible. I mean, by and then that the logic, Bronco. The no, 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 no. we got away from, here's the thing you don't get. We, as a society, got away from the original intention of the SUV, which is to be a convertible. Everyone thought they had to have a hardtop, but think about it. The Chevy Blazer, originally convertible. The 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 the, the Forerunner, removable hardtop. The uh, F Toyota FJ was convertible. Okay, so this is a return to form. If we want to get to semantics, I appreciate what you're doing here. That's pretty I, good. I huh? appreciate pretty good. what you're doing. I totally sh took your argument and like broke its neck and threw it no, out of, threw I, it out of the convertible. SUV. Are those are removable tops convertibles? I'm not saying that. I'm saying the Toyota FJ had a soft top. But the, it was a removable top. No, it, that oh, was an option. It had a soft top. Uh -huh. Wrangler never had a top. Well, you know, the original Jeep never had a yeah. top. Then it got a soft top. Um, hard top's an option. Bronco was a soft top. Uh, also had a removable top. Chevy Blazer, removable top, but so, still. So, by your logic then, this is the most SUV. This is a throwback to the way things should have been. The world went crazy. And they're like, I don't really want a station wagon, I want an SUV. Yeah. So now everything's a three row boring ass SUV. Look at this. So all Freedom. The... Do that again. Freedom. <laughs> so all the guys out there who complain about real SUVs not existing anymore, there's they no body frame, they should be driving these. Yeah. So all that's, those real serious men out there. Yep, that's what I'm saying. 
I like that. I can dig that. Yeah. Yeah. This is sweet. I'll I, concede my argument just to make those people feel uncomfortable for the slightest moment. I think the biggest problem with the Evoke convertible is the color. I think white does look like a bathtub. Okay. I think okay. if we had an orange one yeah. or like... You want like a bright, like a magenta. Yeah. You want a, or you want green. a, like a Bentley maybe just gaudy green. color, right? Well, I want a Bentley. But well, maybe just green. Okay. You know? Okay. Um, the other thing is, remember, this has uh, got that Land Rover badge on it. So it's actually real good off-road. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. The Evoke. I've taken Evokes off-road. They're, yeah. they're real good. What level of off-road? Because there's... You're not rock crawling. A but lot of can, us like drive on dirt, drive up a hill no, on dirt no, no, once, no, no, no. and then say like, "Ah, oh, it's good off road." But like, there's no, there's it's, a, it's actually off road is a scale. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. There's, there's no, whole... it's got the the forward ter terrain response mm -hmm. junk. But this uh, this it does not have. I mean, this has this uh, stuff four by four. I mean, what you want to talk like overhangs? You want to talk like clearance? Do you want to talk differentials? Oh, it doesn't have like ma major articulation. You're not going to go rock crawling. You know, it's yeah. not a body on frame SUV, but. It's really capable. Um, and it's it's the same system like, you know that uh, uh, at least electronically that you know the the Discovery has and the yeah. the Range Rover and all that has and those are really good off road, and this has pretty good articulation. You know, and it's it's one thing Land Rover does well is make off road vehicles. I haven't done. Ah, 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 ah. I haven't done any off road. That was a minivan trying to yeah. get killed. Another Toyota. Shocker. Go ahead. I haven't done any major off-road driving in this, so I can't uh, say whether I agree or not. You were there, though, in 2012 when we did SUV of the Year. I so. was, and this when we picked uh, Evoke SUV of the Year, I did not vote for it. Oh, but you took it off-road is my point. Yeah, but that off-road course is not... It's a rally course. It's, it's a rally course. It's not an off-road course. Uh, still, it's pretty good. I mean, if you want to talk about, like, power sliding SUVs through the dirt at speeds that we probably shouldn't have been, it was a great time. Yeah. All that. This all the is, SUVs were really good. Bad. I'm glad we're adventuring through this part of the, the Fontana. That's right. <laughs> in in the, such a... This is the real Fontana. In such an inconspicuous vehicle. I think we're blending in nicely. Yeah, I'd agree. We've got this, you know, really flashy SUV with GoPros hanging off of it. Yeah. I'm nice. feeling good. Uh, so when's the last time you drove an Evoke? Uh, we had a long-termer after SUV of the year. Is that the one where the letters that kept flying off? They had problems. Uh, the doors, something wrong with the doors. I mean, I remember seeing, walking by it, and, like, the E was missing or something off the badge. Like, it was just Evoke. Yeah. Um, it's been a couple years, actually. And I, I always liked the Evoke, and yeah. I've always been curious about the Evoke convertible. Because uh, I actually drove the Murano Cross Cab around for a week. Yes. Two things. One is, I remember when it showed up at Fontana and uh, Kim Reynolds was there and I said, hey, Kim, what do you think of that? And he just looked at me and started laughing. Just... <laughs> the cross cabriolet. And then I remember right around here, actually, so uh, the next street up is Cherry. Yeah, yeah. Making a right going down Cherry and a dude pulled up to me in a Honda Civic and was like, what is that? I'm like, this is the Nissan Murano cross cab. He's like, that's awesome. I'm gonna buy one, and I've, I've I've never had more people stop me to talk about a car, except for really? a Lamborghini SV. Okay. And aside from okay. that, it was the Murano Cross Cab. So, and, I, and real quick, I finish my anecdote. And uh, my my cousin from England was out visiting, and she loved it. She I was driving around Hollywood in this thing. She just loved it. I don't know what my point is. Those things. Happened. I think the point <laughs> is that you're don't realize that you're forming is that you're a crazy person. <laughs> <laughs> who actually like thinks there's some redeeming qualities to any of these SUVs. I like this one a lot. I, I could totally rock this. I think you should. I, I might. Maybe I think this could be my new long term. Take this for a while. You should call yeah. Land Rover. Uh, What's up? I get excited when I see a cross cabriolet on the street. Yeah. Because I see more Ferraris. Yeah. On a daily basis. I saw like seven Ferraris this morning. Today notwithstanding. Oh. You know, because yeah, I see. We're, we're, I see. At, we're at Cal Speedway. I mean, we live in Los Angeles. You see about one Ferrari a day. Yeah, you and know, you see unless you go to Beverly zero. Hills and you see a lot of Ferraris a day. And then you see zero Murano Cross Cabriolets. You don't. I, I, you know, the only I when I go to visit my mother, uh, there's one that lives uh, around the corner from her. It's a, like a plum colored one. Yeah. So I, I see that one a lot. It's funny. Like I have an immediate distaste for this car and the Cross Cabriolet, right? But here's the thing. I mean, let me establish that. Okay. Meet it this taste. But in reality, I shouldn't. Because right. Because all a convertible is saying to the world is like, I just like, you know, feeling the wind through my hair and like looking up and seeing the sun. Like, it's the same reason I love sports cars that don't have roofs. Yeah. 
it's just, but think, and like I said, think of the provenance, right? Uh, Jeeps, no roof. Hey, look, we're in an SUV with no roof. I still have a fundamental disagreement that those and this are share the same. Well, I mean, what's really different in the way most people okay. drive? In the okay. way most people drive. I'm gonna draw the analogy again. All right. Tomatoes are fruit. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Would you put one in a fruit salad? I wouldn't. Maybe a cherry tomato. Even then, you're still okay. Like, but but that, you're if missing, you gave, you're that, my if you gave point, a bowl though. of tomato salad, most BMW owners don't know if their car is front or rear wheel drive. So I'm gonna say most Jeep Wrangler owners don't really know about locking diffs and like wheel articulation and approach and departure angles. I think a pretty good number of no, not most. I think a lot, but not so most. So that that gives wait. So how does that relate to this? Because most people that need a convertible SUV. They Nobody really... needs a convertible SUV. Let's, right, let's... right. You know, the buys. Yeah, <laughs> no one needs anything. But the, most people that do the buying, um, they uh, they don't actually need all the capability. And so sure. does a Jeep have more capability off-road than this? Yes. But does a Jeep ride well? No. Uh, does a Jeep get decent fuel economy? No. no. Uh, is a Jeep in any way practical? Like, no. This, this thing, like, you know, uh, I don't know. It's got all the good kind of entertainment stuff. No, keep and going. Keep going. <laughs> Sorry. Keep, keep rolling. I'm making this up on the fly, I can man. tell. <laughs> but what I'm saying is, so this probably, if, you, if you're buying a Jeep, yeah, because you like the way it looks, uh -huh. well, this car looks pretty good. If you're buying a Jeep because you want an SUV that then you can put the top down once in a while, hey, you can do that with this. So, you know, I, I don't see how this Consider, is so much worse than a Jeep. I think but what happens stereo on this. is the pres the, the Okay. Do that again. Right? <laughs> you bought any sports car you buy, you're not buying because you're actually going to take it to its performance limit, right? No. Like M4, no. ZL1, no. anything. No, no, no. But there's the intention that you might one day. There's the th thought that you yeah. might. You're yeah, buying yeah, it yeah, for yeah, the Yeah, 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 yeah. Right, of course. I love that. We're just, like members, we don't have to sign in. It's like, great. Kind of they you know. buy a, a Wrangler, I'm just trying to get into the mind yeah, of a Wrangler yeah. buyer. You think that, hey, I might want to go off-road sometime. Or, hey, I like the character of this thing. This doesn't have that character. Well, I don't know. It, it doesn't can, have it can the go ruggedness. In a, sure, it can, but it yeah. doesn't have that ruggedness and appearance. And it doesn't yeah. immediately tell you this is an off-road capable vehicle outside of the Land Rover badging. Yeah, but then people that maybe are watching our video, they're like, that thing go off-road? Trust like, me. Not a lot of them are watching this. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I like this thing. I mean, it just drives so much better than a Wrangler. It does. I'm not disagreeing, but getting into the like the mind of the person who's buying the car, I, I this makes less of a, this doesn't align the same way as the Wrangler. It doesn't align with the Wrangler. Like, I don't see any crossover between those buyers. Well, no I, pun intended. Yeah, I mean, it, it, maybe 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 not. You don't see it. Uh, maybe here you don't see it. Um, you know, remember in other countries. Uh, Jeeps are basically seen as like Miatas. Like they're just fun little toys that you drive on the beach in Aruba. You okay. Know? You know, so like, hey, I could drive this on the beach in Aruba. What, what point are we making right now? I'm not sure. I'm just saying I don't hate this thing and I think you're th saying you hate it. I don't, mm, I, yeah, I think I am saying I hate it. <laughs> I think, yeah, I think that's ultimately, what a, what a nice moment of self-discovery <laughs> we've shared in this Evoke and you can too. <laughs> by watching more Daily Fix. Thank you guys for watching this episode. And we'll see you next time. Two Cool Guys Productions. Here's what you missed last week on Daily Fix, exclusively on Motor Trend On Demand. I have just completed a hot lap at Willow Springs in the 2017 Aston Martin DB11. It's high-speed luxury transportation. Yeah. The meat of the episode, let's yeah. say, is really with Justin. What he likes about Aston Martin is this is how British people want the world to see them. I'm Carlos Lago, and if you didn't watch last week's Daily Fix, you should do that now. It's exclusive on Motor Trend.